going on, y'all? Welcome back to the channel. So we just got back from Iron Horse Mud Ranch. If y'all didn't get a chance, make sure you check those videos out. They're a little bit lengthy, but there's a lot of good content on there. And there's also some uh, unforeseen circumstances that we're going to start figuring out now. So this video, we're going to start diagnosing what in the hell is going on with killing a mega truck. Why is she white smoking like a son of a gun? Killing it, bro. Why do I have no power and why am I starting to blow some oil out of the freaking hood stack? And it's leaking all down the motor. It's, it's a very, very unpleasant sight. It's not something I'm too happy about, to be honest with you. Not too thrilled about it at all, actually. Not even a little bit. But since we got back, I've been talking with the mad scientists to try to figure out, okay, what's the first step for us to diagnose exactly what in the hell is going on? Because as I've told you all a whole bunch of times, I don't really know the engine side of this truck too well. I mean, I know some of the smaller upgrades that I've done to it myself. I know some of the stuff that I've had done to it because I've had the truck for like 10 years now, I think, roughly. It's about 10 years or so, I think, right around there. But as far as like how to diagnose this or what's going on or, or how to even know if you actually blew the engine, learning that as we go. So y'all gonna be learning with me. Pretty exciting stuff, huh? Hope you're excited, because I'm not excited at all, because I think I'm gonna have some bad freaking news. But after talking with a mad scientist, he said, the first thing I gotta do is run a compression check on the engine. So I went ahead and picked up a compression test kit, and surprisingly enough, I've never run a compression check on a diesel engine before, or any engine for that matter. Though I never ran a compression test, I do understand what it is and why I'm doing it, so let me go ahead and fill y'all in if you don't know. Basically, what I'm doing is I'm going to take like a pressure gauge and it's going to be hooked up to each cylinder. I'm going to have to do each one at a time. But you hook the pressure gauge up to the cylinder and then turn the motor over and that cylinder will pressurize. Now, if there's kind of a crack or some kind of issue, there won't be any compression. There will be no pressure in it. And as engines start to wear out, the compression does start to decrease and decrease because of the fitment of all the internals of the motor. So I'm going to be going through to find out if I have a bad cylinder and if I do have a bad cylinder, which one. This will also tell me if it's even a cylinder-related issue. So I reached out to our good buddy JH over at JH Diesel, and he gave me a 30-second lesson on how in the hell to do this. Hey, he's a good dude. He got my back every now and then. So without further ado, let's start diagnosing this on bitch. starters let's get her cleaned up so we know what the heck we're looking at all right y'all so mr jh says to now fire it up and send him a video of what it sounds like and then while it's running pull the oil cap off and show him what that looks like because he said to his freaking disbelief there is a slight possibility that my engine could still be alive it might just be a turbo still so i don't know fingers freaking crossed we shall see we'll know here in a few minutes Turn that off. We don't want to listen to the compressors for the train horns. Bad news, y'all. I just sent those videos over to Mr. Freaking JH. And he says, Well, she's dead. There's a bad cylinder in there somewhere. That's why that, because that's the one cylinder that shot. So he is uh, pretty much 99% certain that I've got a blown motor. Now, just to be 100% sure, I'm going to go ahead and take out this driver's side fender well because I've been leaking a lot of oil on the driver's side of the truck. That's right there. It's coming down there and it's coming from up yonder i'm gonna pull this side, side fender wheel out so hopefully we can get a little better look so it got a little dark last night so now i'm going to continue forward pulling this fender wheel out see if i can figure out where that oil is coming from and then also start running a compression check figure out which cylinder is bad because everyone under the sun is telling me that I'm pretty sure that cracked a piston so compression check will tell me which piston's cracked and for sure if one is cracked or if it's something else like a blown turbo or maybe a blown head gasket. All right, y'all, now that I got the fender well out, you can tell that the engine's still... Don't mind all this Photoshop mud, okay? This is not a mud truck. This is a show truck. Depend on who you ask. Some people say it's a show truck. Some people say it's a mud truck. Some people say it's a pretty boy truck. 
Here's the people that say it's a pretty boy truck, they're the haters. Anyways, to get the fender wheel out, it's pretty easy. You just pull all the screws out, they right there, right there, right there, right there. There's like a retainage clip that went here. There's one that went in here. It's all pretty self-explanatory. Just pull all the hardware out. The plastic fender well comes right out. Pretty simple. And then right in here is where our glow plugs are. So there's one of them. Right in there. That's one. There's another one back there. See it right here. And the other ones are behind this intercooler pipe. I might have to take this intercooler pipe out of the way. Yeah, because it's like kind of blocking these front two. And then I'm gonna have to do the same thing on the passenger side. But actually, no. Just hoping I could get a better idea where that oil is coming from, but I still don't see anywhere in particular it'd be coming from. Hmm. But anyways, you go ahead and one at a time you pull out those glow plugs and then you slip your compression tool right in the hole where that glow plug was. So I'll show you my handy any new compression checker, compression checker gauge. I don't really know what they call them. Compression checker, that's what we're gonna go with. But I'll show you that real quick, hang on. This is my diesel compression test set, right from Snap-on. Part number EEPD501. So, fresh off the old Snap-on truck. Get her open. So it comes in here, handy dandy instructions. Diagnostic. Oh, just other different uh, accessories you can get with it. But, most importantly, my gauge. And I believe he was saying this will screw into the glow plug port. And basically all you gotta do, one at a time you unscrew the glow plug, you gotta take the wire off it and then take the plug off. And you screw this in place of the plug and then hook this gauge up to it. And then make sure you gotta disconnect, he told me to disconnect the crank sensor. So it's a little three-way plug up in the front of the engine. So go ahead and disconnect that sensor and then leave your gauge hooked up to your first cylinder that you're checking and then go inside the truck, turn the truck over three to five seconds and then go check the gauge. Whatever the gauge stops at, it'll go ahead and it'll, it'll pressurize and it'll stay wherever it, wherever the max point is. So you wanna go ahead and note that down and note what cylinder it was. My buddy Daryl over AutoWorks, he actually just screenshotted me and sent me over which cylinder is which. So I actually know what number cylinder coordinates to the readings that I'm getting. So I'm gonna go ahead and note all that down. And I guess once you have them all logged down, the problem cylinder will present itself because most of them will be within a few points of each other and there'll be something that will be astronomically different. So without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and start checking each one of these cylinders and note them all down and then we'll see what we come up with. Whew, who would have thought something so simple would be such a pain right in the ball bag. Let me show you what I'm talking about. That damn camshaft sensor that I need to unplug so the engine doesn't fire when I'm checking the cylinder pressures. Well, that sensor is back in here. I'm on the passenger side of the truck. Let me see if I can even see it. Yeah, it's like right there is where it plugs into. And this is the plug that I just pulled off of there. There's a tab right here. You just got to push on that tab pretty hard. And then it releases a snap and this plug will come off. But I sat there for, oof, yeah, it's frustrating. Especially when you don't know what the plug looks like or what you're supposed to be squeezing because you can't freaking see up in there. But that is what the plug looks like. I would have paid some good money to freaking see that about 10 minutes ago. Anyways, it's just got a little tab right here. It's kind of, it's a, it's not easy. I had to squeeze it with some pliers. But you squeeze on that tab and then this plug will pull right out. And again, that's located just behind this plate right back in here. Right there, you can see the female end of it right on in there. So now that's disconnected, I can go ahead and start checking <sighs> all of my different glow plugs or all my different cylinders and checking the compression. Well, so far so good. I went ahead and already got this first glow plug disconnected. All it is, there's another one there. You just take the eight millimeter wrench or eight millimeter socket, pull the uh, nut off, pull the wire off, and then that's a 12 millimeter to pull the glow plug out. Go ahead and pull that glow plug out and then make sure my tool slips right on in there and see what kind of pressure we're getting. And there's the glow plug. Hmm. I ain't gonna lie to y'all, I never even pulled glow plugs on a diesel before. 
that's all you got to do. Honestly, them glow plugs have been bad for a long time. I didn't know it was this easy to do or I would have done this a long time ago. I don't think any of the glow plugs work on this motor. I think I've got codes for every single one of them. But I think these are kind of expensive. So that, I don't know, these diesels nowadays are rapid start according to a couple mechanics I've talked to. So I said it's not really necessary. Since I live in Florida and it's 900 degrees, 363 and a half days out of the year. So... Anyways, now that I got the glow plug out, I can go ahead and put my compression tool in there and see what kind of pressure we get on this first cylinder. So I went ahead and checked the instruction manual for my handy dandy new snap-on compression test kit. And it looks like this is the adapter that I need. That camera angle is a lot more clear than the other one. But anyways, it's this one. It's an EEPV312D. And that is the M10 by 1.25 thread pitch. So I'm going to go ahead and thread this right on into that there hole. Hook up the gauge, and let's see what kind of pressure we got. All right, so I got my gauge connected. Justin said turn it over three to five seconds. I'm not going to lie, I'm a little nervous because I've never done this before. And hopefully nothing, I mean, well, the engine's already toast. So I guess nothing that much worse could happen, but things could always get worse. So go ahead. I hope she doesn't try to start. Well, that was successful. She didn't start. This In this particular instance, we didn't want it to start. Now, let's go see what that cylinder pressure is at. It is. What the heck? Oh, there we go. 450. I think that's good. I'm not going to lie to y'all. Like, I know what I'm talking about. I said it 400 times. I'm still learning this motor. I have no idea what that number means. That could be amazing, or it could be pff, absolutely horrible. Pretty much speaking gibberish. So I'm going to go ahead and repeat that process, pull it out the remaining glow plugs, write it all down on a piece of paper, what all the compression rates are at, or compression pressures. I don't even know what you call it, see? Pff, we're learning together, people. So I'm going to go ahead and note all that down, and then, like... Justin was saying the problem cylinder should present itself. So I got a lot of cylinders to check. Seven more actually. So time to get to it. All right, what kind of compression are we getting? Looks like, turn on the light here. Call that 430, 435, let's say 435. All right y'all, so we're making some progress. I just finished with the passenger side. And so far, these are our rates, our pressures. But something kind of funky that I just saw, and I don't know if it's causing all this ruckus or not. But as I was over here finishing, I happened to grab this, my stack pipe, and that's not supposed to be doing that. If I look on up in there, you all see it? Mm, maybe not. It's kind of hard. Why? Well, actually, you know, I'm, hang on a sec. There we go. That makes it a little bit better to see. So if you look way back in there, my whole downpipe is moving a lot. And I can see oil. It's really hard to show you all. I hope you guys appreciate it. See, I see all the oil. Right there, that's on the back side of the turbo pedestal. So I wonder if it is just a blown up turbo. It's got tons of oil on it. It's looser than hell. I wonder. Maybe from up there I can see more. I'm gonna finish this compression test and then we'll, I mean, obviously that can't be loose like that, but I wonder if I do have just a blown up turbo. Okay, now this is not a good sign. Just pulled this glow plug out of, I think this is cylinder number eight. It's the back driver's side one. And there's much more oil on this than there has been on any of the other ones. The other ones were more kind of charred. This one's got oil all over it. So I believe that might be the blown cylinder. I'm gonna find out here in a minute. Well, just went through the whole sequence, checked all the cylinders. I'm on number eight. I just let her crank over like I've been doing. Take a look at this pressure. I think that might be the bad cylinder, brother. 
son of a... All right, y'all, so now we're on the second night of diagnosis. Um, yeah, I was a little unhappy last night. Kind of freaking sucked, but it's all right. I'm feeling a little bit better now. Got, got that out of the way. So I don't know if you guys could read my chicken scratch freaking from before. My handwriting's not that bad, but I went ahead and made this little chart deal. As y'all can see, cylinder number eight said, peace, we're out of here. They are no longer part of the party. It's not a party unless everyone's there. So we don't have a party. So now I'm kind of just from my own knowledge and for mad scientists kind of wants to know too, I'm trying to figure out, okay, exactly what the hell is going on in that cylinder that's causing it to have no compression. So luckily, as I keep saying, I'm not sh without my friends. Oh, my good buddy, Daryl over at AutoWorks, he used to actually do a lot of the maintenance on the truck when it was a daily driver. So for like six years, he was maintaining the thing for me. He was doing my old change and all that stuff. Really good guy down in Venice. If you guys ever need some basic maintenance under your vehicle, make sure you hit him up, AutoWorks down in Venice, Florida. That's AutoWorks, it's spelled kind of funky. Auto, A-U-T-O, works at W-O-R-X. Daryl Kirkland over there, freaking awesome dude. Super knowledgeable. When I first got this truck and was a daily driver, I didn't know a damn thing about Duramaxes or diesels in general. He's actually, he actually from ground one was teaching me how to, one time I ran out of fuel with it, he taught me how to bleed the freaking fuel system, how to get all the air out of it so I get it fired up again. That was a fun little escapade, coming back from the Keys, running out of fuel in the middle of Alligator Alley at two in the morning, freaking sucked. Luckily, Mr. Darrell walked me through what to do. But anyways, digress a little bit there. Man, I digress a lot, freaking squirrel brain, I tell y'all. Anyways, he let me borrow this little contraption. His nice, super bitchin' snap-on camera system. So apparently I can take this, and it's got a little light on it too. When I turn it on, I'll show you all here shortly. But And then it'll show me what's going on there. So I'm going to pull that glow plug back out. The one in cylinder number eight that has got zero compression, I'm going to pull that glow plug back out. And I guess I can snake this camera in there, and I should be able to see what's going on. He's thinking that I'll be able to see if there's a crack in the piston, or if there's a hole burned in it, or what the hell's going on. So... Last night did my first compression test ever. Now I'm going to do my first ever cylinder check. Man, we are just killing it. I'm learning all kinds of stuff about diesels now. So now, once again, all I'm going to need is my 12 millimeter socket and my 8 millimeter socket. The 8 millimeter is to go ahead and pull that nut off the top of the glow plug there and then disconnect the wire. And the 12 millimeter will go around the actual glow plug, pull the glow plug out, and then I can sink the camera in there and figure out why in the heck I've got zero cylinder pressure and cylinder number eight. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this off and we'll see what we're working with. Okay, glow plugs out. Now I gotta turn this contraption on. Oh, yep, there it goes. Hmm. It's kind of hard to hold the camera and all too. All right, y'all. And we're off. Welcome you to inside cylinder number eight. see anything real obvious though i mean i don't know maybe to someone that knows motors they know right what the problem is but i know the camera will not go any further in we are maxed out as far as depth yeah it will not go in any further it's pretty cool you can like take little pictures of this thing too well that's pretty much all the information we're going to get. All right, y'all. As I went through and started kind of looking at that footage that I showed y'all, realized I wasn't even down into the freaking cylinder. I told you I'm still learning this stuff, but you're learning with me. So how about that? Oh, man. So I went ahead and borrowed the camera again from Mr. Daryl over at AutoWorks, and he has a different idea, a different plan of attack. What we're going to do, he actually told me how to take the injector off of the cylinder, cylinder number eight, pull the injector out, and then he said through that hole, he actually had an injector cup that was right there at his shop and he double checked to make sure the camera would fit in it. Freaking fits like a freaking glove. <laughs> like a glove. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this injector out. And then from that point, we should be able to snake the camera in there and see exactly what the damage is. Because I still have not told anyone that there's a problem. The people, Some people saw the video going around social media where the truck is smoking like a freaking choo-choo train while I'm leaving the freaking mud hole. Well, I just still don't know what the hell the problem is. It could be maybe a bad injector. I highly doubt it. I'm pretty sure we got a crack piston, but until I know it, I ain't gonna say it. So whew, I gotta go pull that hot side intercooler pipe off so that I can get to the injector. And then from there, I'll be able to pull the hold down screw, disconnect both the, the feeder the feeder hose and the return hose that goes to that injector. And then we'll be able to sneak the camera in there and see what the problem is. So whew, here we go. So let me show y'all what we're gonna do specifically before I go ahead and start getting to ranching. Like my sweet freaking platform I made so I could work on the motor. I think I gotta make a little more heavy duty one. This one's a little, eh, I don't know. Seems to be sturdy enough. But anyways, so this is what we're doing here. Gotta pull this intercooler pipe off because the injector is like freaking underneath it. I almost can't even show y'all. But you can kind of see it. It's like right there. The camera kind of won't focus on it, but it's down in that hole yonder. So. Let me go ahead and get this pipe out of the way and you'll be able to see much better. All right, now y'all should be able to see a little bit better. What we're going for is uh, right there. Bam, right where that freaking hose connects. Right here, I need to get this disconnected and maybe get these lines out of the way. Right here, get these two lines out of the way so I can see a little better. But that back there is the injector. I guess there's like a hold down bolt which, I don't know, to be totally honest with you, I'm still not too sure what the hell I'm doing. So, once I figure it out, I'll tell y'all. Well, I ain't gonna lie, all this kind of freaking sucks because of the location of that damn cylinder. So, let me show y'all what we got going on. So, right back in there is the injector we've been messing with. So, the hose is loose, the Peter hose to it. All it is is a little clip clip looks like this it was in this direction so i just had to put a flat head screwdriver in here and kind of pop the clip out just like a little retainer clip and then that feeder hose just pulls right on out so now that's free i see that uh that clip just went around right inside that little indentation there that little uh groove but so once the uh feeder hose is free i went ahead and loosened up Back here with a 17 millimeter wrench. Damn, you can't see nothing, huh? Maybe from below. Let's see here. Yeah, it's a really awkward freaking spot. Here, I'll just show you what I'm, on this injector, I'll show you what I did. All right, so right back in here, right there is the uh, return line. 17 millimeter wrench takes that loose. That little clip was right here, so you can kind of see this clip. It's off to the side right to the right of it right there, right where that line goes in. So I just put a flathead screwdriver in there, pop the clip that way, line pulled right out, you press it down on here, and this unplugs the injector. And then I had to take the retainer bolt that's down, this one's right there, it's a, uh, right here. So it's right below the injector. This is just a 12 millimeter socket. I went ahead and loosened this up, pulled this bolt out. And once you've done all that, you kind of look like this. So see the hose is out of it, bolts out of it. Now, from what I understand, I just gotta take a pry bar and go around it and just kind of pop this injector free. And then we should be good to go. Woo, freaking got it. That was kind of a pain right in the ball bag because of its freaking location. But I successfully just removed my first diesel injector. And I wish I knew more about them so I could know if this looks bad or not. I don't, I mean, I think all the dirt and stuff's on there probably for me pulling it out, but. Now I can sneak the camera down that hole. We can figure out what the hell's going on with this motor. So let me go get the camera and let's see what we're working with. All right, y'all. Well, before I get the camera in there, just going to show you kind of where we're at. So driver's side of the truck, <clears throat> where that injector used to be, right back in there. That right there is going to be our inspection hole. We're going to shove the camera right on in there. And Perhaps see a busted piston, I'm not sure. All right, y'all, here we go. Off on another adventure.
this is moving and I don't see any holes in it. And I don't think this camera will go deep enough into the injector hole to be able to see. Yeah, it gets stuck. All right, well, as y'all can freaking see, still can't get the damn camera in there. It's just a little bit too big. I was kind of comparing it with the injector and basically the camera needs to be the same diameter as this tip of the injector in order to really get it down into the cylinder where it needs to go. And it's bigger than that. So it needs to be this measures 0.28 and the end of that camera measures like 0.32, I think, or something like that. So it's just a little bit too big. I tried bumping the engine up and down, as you can see, and still can't see this uh, top of the uh, piston all that well. So pretty sure there's a crack in it though, or there's a piece missing but I just can't quite see it. So I'm gonna go ahead and chalk this up as pretty sure the piston is freaking Dunzo. Um, the mad scientist actually just called me and he has a camera system as well. And it might be a little smaller diameter. So still got a little bit of hope that I might be able to see what's going on before we actually have to pull the engine and everything. But no matter what, it looks like the engine's gonna have to come out <sighs> and we're gonna be on to a whole nother level. <sighs> got a pretty good plan in mind. I wanna tell you all about it, but can't tell you quite yet. Gotta keep you in suspense, but it's gonna be pretty cool. It's gonna be very, very super freaking super kill on it, tell you that. But wanna get the rest of his stuff dialed in, so waiting here back from him to see if that camera is gonna be the right size. Uh, then I'll check back in with you all, let you know if we can maybe see the top of the piston or not. JH says that he's pretty sure we're not gonna be able to see it. He's thinking that the holes on these engines these days are just too freaking small on these newer model trucks. So he doesn't think I'll be able to see the crack piston without having to pull the head. And that's not something I'm prepared to do outside of my house out there in the elements, trying to pull a freaking head off an engine while it's up in the monster truck. Not ideal. Any good mechanic will probably tell you that that's not a good route. So wait to hear back from the mad scientist and then we'll go from there. All right, y'all, well, I just heard back from the mad scientist. Sadly, his camera system measures 0.31, which is still not the 0.28 or smaller. That would need to be the size of the tip of that injector to be able to fit down in the cylinder and be able to see what the hell's going on. So, as of right now, calling her dead. Killing a mega truck has lived up to her name. She has been killed. Engine is no longer part of the party. So moving forward, we got a few different options of what we could do. I've talked with a couple buddies, a couple engine builders, got some ideas. Basically narrowed it down to four different ideas of where to go from here. Option one, sell the killing a truck, build something new. It's always a viable option. It's always on the table. Everything is always for sale for the right price. Option two. Put a factory motor in it. It's relatively stock. Maybe you still put a little bit of nitrous on it and tune it, and that's pretty much it. Option three. We can do a mildly built engine. This is actually the option that JH has been kind of recommending. Maybe a little bit bigger turbo in the valley, maybe a little bit better pistons, head stud it, things like that. Or there's option four. But I ain't gonna lie to y'all, riding in Rally's freaking twin turbo Duramax definitely got me thinking. We go way over the top and be super freaking killing. Think y'all know which direction I'm heading. So that being said, we do got a pretty cool game plan in mind. I'm gonna start filling y'all in probably in these next couple videos. So please keep a close eye on the channel. Also, as always, make sure you hit the like button at the bottom of the screen, hit the subscribe button on my channel name, and then you'll get notified every time I put up another video. So hope you all enjoyed the video. I'm sorry it wasn't as informational as it could have been, but I was still kind of learning this stuff as I was going through it all. So hopefully y'all learned a little something. Hopefully y'all enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching y'all. If y'all enjoyed the video and want to check out future videos, subscribe to our channel. Hit that button right there. While you're at it, hit the like button at the bottom of your screen. You can also check out our website, killingitlifestyle.com. There you can follow the Killing It crew and order your own apparel so everyone will know you're killing it.